Chair and here to join us. Um, we'll get started with our agenda um, with our roll call. Uh, Mr. Bailey, we know Mr. Pines is going to be absent. Um, Ms. Jiggins? Here. Mr. Kelly? Mrs. Lucas Burr? Here. Mr. Thomason? Here. Mr. Thompson? Here. You have a quorum. Uh, we'll take a look at our minutes of our December 15th meeting, and our commissioners have had an opportunity to review them already. Uh, but if there are any changes to be noted, we'll hear them now. Um, if none, we'll entertain a motion uh, for approval. Second. Okay, Mr. Bailey, uh, let's see, Mr. Pines, Mrs. Jiggins? Here. Mr. Thompson? Here. to our financials for our December 15th uh, meeting, and we'll um, take a look at those um, commissioners if there's any questions after Ms. Kelly gives the report. We, we don't have a report. Have one. That's right. yeah, report. report. We didn't have the December's, um, because of the move, we didn't get the bank statements on time, mm -hmm. so we will have another one where we'll send those out and have December, January's, and the February meeting. We do have a new accountant She's not new to the city, but she will be new to Fort Worth BBA. Uh, Tony Alston is going to be helping me do the financials each month. We also took um, your suggestion of making the um, the grants. Uh, we have it what's been encumbered versus what's been paid. So the, you know, she has fixed that, so she's been working on things. And so we'll have a good updated um, version of that. Okay. Right. No votes. to our old business section of our agenda. And the first up is our properties for resale, um, the listings um, with our agents for our RFP. Thank um, you. Um, your um, committee, your ad hoc committee that includes uh, Mr. Um, uh, uh, Thompson and Mr. Bailey um, have been meeting with the representative from the city assessor's office and the procurement department. And we have conducted a uh, interviews of two-thirds of the groups that are being considered. We will be completing those interviews later this week, so we are slightly behind, but uh, not by much, in uh, making a decision and bringing a recommendation to you all. So we will have that for you at your February meeting, um, and I'll certainly defer to the commissioners if they want to add anything else. So I think we're being productive, and Absolutely. I think we'll feel good when we make our recommendation. Absolutely. Okay, well, we look forward to hearing that update in uh, February. Um, Commissioner Thompson. Yeah, just curious, are we able to uh, take action on that? Everybody had a sense of urgency to make that happen. Is that something that it was uh, the committee made a recommendation? We could take a, a vote by email or, or a fact conference call? Or Looks like the contract is it'll be a list of agreements. So I, I think it probably will be in a regular meeting. Yeah, yeah. So just to be in the open public so that everyone will know, um, you know, how we uh, voted on those contracts that are going forward. All right, next up is our local incentive program, and Ms. Butler is going to give us a I'm going to put this up on the screen so it's a little easier to follow. Um, Here's what we have. Um, I made a mistake in some information that I shared with you about the application number two for 600 High Street's local incentive um, application for the facade improvement grant. I transposed some numbers. The original, uh, their first application they submitted in October had an estimated cost of $11,555 plus a 15% contingency, which we always add in for a total of $13,288 with 
um, since the grant is eligible for 50% of that, that grant uh, would have equaled $6,644. That was the recommendation you received. That is what you approved. That is what we passed on to them. Their November application had an estimated cost of $40,400 plus a 15% contingency. And I'm on a roll. I've made another typo. That should be $6,660 there for a total of $46,460. The maximum grant could be 50 or 23,230, except of course this building had already received the prior grant in October of 6,000 and some. So the, if you do the math, this second grant should have been $18,356. However, when I gave you all the written report and the recommendation and when we sent their grant applications out after you voted, I had transposed some numbers and put $16,586. Um, brought to my attention in mid-December. Uh, city Attorney and I spoke, and uh, we do need your approval to correct my error and change or increase that second grant by another $1,770. So that's why we're here today. I was just moving too fast or moving too quickly. Those, it would have been nice to receive it as an attachment before the meeting, uh, along with the other information that we received. Um, as you know, the EDA um, has sold the bulk of the former IC Markham site to two groups. You sold 13 acres to Kroger for the Midtown Market for their Midtown Marketplace store, and then you sold all but this last one acre to the Crest, Crest EG Development Company, and they have been in there developing the strip that has the TJ Maxx and the Hibbit. They have done the out parcels, and this one parcel remains. They have an option on that parcel. They have come to us and indicated that they intend to exercise that option. This is an acre. Um, they have the opportunity to do a um, single tenant building for Cox Communications. Cox would go in there with one of their service centers to bring in um, folks who are paying bills, folks who are um, uh, activating service, discontinuing services, changing at the boxes. Um, as any of you know who are uh, Cox customers, you have to go in person to do a fair amount of that. So it is a major um, people generator, um, and they are eligible through all of our agreements. We've had uh, uh, Jeff Miller review that to be able to develop it as a Cox store. Um, you might recall, though, we had hoped to maybe put a restaurant, perhaps a full-service restaurant, on this site. Um, they have marketed it. I have been in meetings with them with um, some national chains that would be sit-down restaurants. And the way the ultimate site was carved out, and you can see the shape here, it's just too challenging and too tight and too difficult for these sit-down, full-service restaurants to be able to fit in there. They've got one or two that have had an interest, but it's just too tight um, the way it ended up being carved out. And uh, I imagine the director of planning could, could add a little bit mm -hmm. to that since he's more familiar with how to fit a square peg in a round hole. Mm -hmm. um, but um, they, um, they have come to us and said that they would like to pursue the option um, and so I bring that forward to you today. Um, there is opportunity, as you know, on the Seaboard Commons site 
that the uh, Portsmouth Redevelopment and Housing Authority is marketing with their uh, master developer and with Tavares across the street on their nine acre site. So if in fact that these restaurants have an interest in a submarket, there is additional opportunity for us and it's not as if we wouldn't have the opportunity to have those restaurants and services in Portsmouth. Uh, but this is a use that is complementary to the shopping center. It is customary to have Cox Communication stores in shopping centers. They are a people generator. People come in, they turn in those boxes, they change the names on the accounts, and then proceed to shop in the other stores. So I'll share that with you for um, information today. There is no action item to be taken. Just wanted you to know that they would be coming to us. Of course, is this, is this uh, in addition to the store in church, or this would be a placement of the store in church? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Church still it's, still it's still open. It's still open. My question was, where are you going to keep it open? That's a good question. I don't know. I, I don't know, but if I were guessing, I doubt it. But I don't know. I can find question. that. Sure. Uh, Mr. Um, Baldwin, explain to me two types. Because there are a plethora of all kinds of restaurants in, right. in this nation. So. Yeah. Well, we talked about a sit down restaurant. So they're a little bit larger than, say, a fast food, an acre site. It's fairly typical fast food restaurant size. Um, when you get down to the size, it's very difficult to put a larger sit-down restaurant, meeting all your parking, your setbacks, your landscaping requirements, your stormwater requirements that, that you may have, all of those things. So this is also not a square or a rectangular parcel. It's a little bit of an odd area down there. So um, not really feasible to put a, a full service sit down restaurant on a parcel that size. And what's the square foot? Did you say it is an acre? I think mean, so it's about an acre it's size. And is that right beside the Lotus Eagles? Is that where that square is? Oh, no. And I we need to know, is it, I don't, is it right beside? I can't it be right beside. The, 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 the gray top, you see that the outline? Gray top. Mm -hmm. The gray roof to the right or to the east of that site is the multi-tenant building that has um, Dunkin' Donuts, uh, Little Caesars, and uh, two or three other shops ABC's and the ABC store. store. And the yellow is the, the, yellow is the, the available the land. land. Yes. And the raw piece of dirt between the yellow and the Wendy's to the north mm -hmm. is where the Taco Bell is under construction now. Right. And just if I could confirm the history as I understand it, that, that parcel was the one that um, Crest had um, tried to secure build-out for, for or development for had been unsuccessful and that's when they came to us and removed it from their original that's purchase correct. agreement with the option because they had such difficulty finding anyone correct. that would correct. occupy yeah. that. So their concern for that was they did decide not to even buy it that's which is for the original agreement. So it was already deemed a yeah. little bit of a challenge for them prior to that. So I'm, this has been right at a year, I guess, before we gave them that option. Does that sound about right? Maybe even 18, 20, 18 it was months. Closing, I think, basically, when we closed on the, on the rest of it. Right, so the hits and all that, all that. Yeah, so they have a little over a year, but they've done well to find somebody for it and take it because it was seemed like that was going to be the one that we were going to get stuck with. We were actually had hesitation right. to accept right. their deal because we were determining whether to force them to take that as part of the deal right. because of the... So we didn't I'm think we were going to be able to do anything with it either. So. Right. Great. Thank you for your comments because I think it's a good use of the land considering the size um, going forward. Um, and I do believe that, you know, it will bring, generate some people um, interest there and, and, you know, hopefully they'll shop. Um, um, Councilman Cherry, um, to, you know, upon your question, if, if they're going to close the church, and of course, when we find that out, we'll inform everyone. But I think that it will be enough um, to generate people on this side of uh, of the towns to, you know, even if the church one were to remain open, because I believe, I know that there was one at Victory Village at one time, and, you know, it was just a small location. I don't think it was a, a full service. Um, I think you could only do uh, a limited amount of services at that location, you know, so um, considering that people come and work here, who don't live here, they may be able to, you know, use this as a middle town um, site to take care of some of their, um, their Cox needs. Well, I would certainly hope that um, that would be an additional yes. location of the cost. And I, I, you know, just go back to it for a second, because I'm trying to visually wrap my 
eyes around the fact that you're saying that it will be on the, the end cap from the Little Caesars mm -hmm. drive through mm -hmm. So would it be facing uh, like the ABC store and the Little Caesars face out, is that, or the Dunkin' Donut, whatever that is, would it be facing the same way or would it be facing Frederick Boulevard? Mm -hmm. they would, from a design standpoint, have to um, present it so that any side facing the street meets the regulations of having a street facade. And I know that they have been with their engineer and architect working with planning to try and figure it out. It's still so challenging. Yeah, and I, have, I haven't seen the last version. We've gone back to them with some some um, uh, requirements out of the zoning code they're addressing, and I haven't looked at the at the latest version of their elevation. That will be. It's not going to be fronting turnpike. It's going to back up the back of the building to be towards turnpike. These are yeah. preliminary yeah. and not approved by planning. Yeah. This yeah. was so their first attempt. Very similar to that. Right, because they would have to come into the property the, right. the same and, way that and, the little slings and swings right. around. So we have some challenge on the zoning side um, because of the fact that it's got two road frontages on an angle. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a little bit complicated in terms of what our code requirements are for uh, parcels that are, um, have road frontage. oriented with its final orientation. Is. I know it's going to be backing towards um, turnpike. I think from a development standpoint, when we look at the usage, I think we're a lot safer going with that type of business versus possibly a, a retail or you know, private use. Because there are challenges, you know, keeping business open. A lot of times it's, it's, it's easy to open a business. It becomes a little difficult to sustain. Lots of uh, lease signs everywhere. Business like that wouldn't have those issues. I think it's a great use. It's a good point. Thank you, Commissioners, for the discussion. Okay, now we'll move into our new business and um, for our agenda. Um, we don't have any relations here. No new business. Okay. Um, then we'll um, take a look at our intent to go into closed meeting. Uh, Commissioner Thompson. or considering the investment of public funds where competition or bargaining involved where it made publicly initially the financial interest of EDA would be adversely affected and consulting with legal counsel employed or retained by the public body regarding specific legal matters requiring provision of legal materials such as noted, uh, such as counsel.
before he went back there. Okay. Right. This is Corey Alston. She's our accountant. She has a master's degree from. You don't master's. Bachelor's degree. I'm sorry. Bachelor's degree. What's this? I don't see. Fine University. Um, I was just, um, I guess the question is to uh, Mr. Ashby, is it possible for us to include now under the old business as an agenda item uh, just to keep it before us, the garage? Uh, I would like to see that as an agenda item uh, for I'll, each month so that okay. I don't look around and it's June and you know what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Jacob, say that again. The garage? The garage. For the garage. The Renaissance garage. The Renaissance garage. The management of the garage. I want to see it now as an agenda item is so that we can keep um, track of the progress on it in terms of the negotiations and everything. All right. So y'all digging into that now? If, Rod V, remember looking at this? Oh, you weren't hitting it. It is right. up, up on it. Yeah, it's already It's up on an extension yeah. while we're looking at uh, some issues with regard to uh, that relationship with the hotel. It's right. on an extension right now for a short period of time. What we need. Your relationship about let me know, okay? Excuse me. Well, <laughs> well that, that, right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.